Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2019 Indian war film called Kasari. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. As the movie begins, we are inched to Ishar Singh, a sergeant of the Sikh regiment of the British Indian Army. He is on a regular patrol near the border along with a group of Sikh soldiers. As Ishar Singh is chatting with one of his subordinates, a British officer called Lawrence interrupts and orders the group to go back to Fort Galliston. When they are about to leave, they see a group of Afghans tribe dragging a woman on the other side of the border. As the woman is about to be executed, Ishar Singh decides to save her, even though Lawrence tells him not to. Ishar Singh fights the whole Afghan tribe on his own, rescuing the woman shortly after. However, he is captured by Mullah Sadula, the tribe's chief. Ishar Singh tries to resist when Mullah is about to take off his turban. Just then, his subordinates rush to save him. Eventually, they get back to Galistan Fort. Lawrence reports Ishar Singh's disobedience and suggests to punish him severely to set an example to the others. The report is sent to their commander in Lockhart for the final decision. In the meantime, Ishar is speaking with one of his subordinates. It is revealed that Ishar's rank is higher than the common Sikh soldiers because his English is better. All of a sudden, a group of Afghan tribesmen approach from afar and fire at them. Luckily, the soldier only gets shot at the arm and is carried to the nursing room. Later on, upon being abruptly attacked, the Sikh force in Galistan fight back and shoot the tribesmen from above. Ishar jumps out of the wall and sees a group of tribesmen are trying to dig a hole to bomb the fort. He finishes them off before they can do so. A tribesman sniper, who hides on a tree nearby, is killing the guards on the defensive wall. Ishar rushes outside of the fort and finds him. On the way, he ambushes and manages to kill another group of tribesmen, approaching by throwing a dynamite at them. In a while, Ishar traces the sniper and manages to get rid of him, but ends up falling into a trap. Now we are introduced to commanding officer John Houghton, who leads a group of armed Sikh soldiers from Lockhart and chases the Afghan tribesmen off. Ishar is summoned to talk to Houghton, who blames him for waging the war between the Afghan tribesmen and the British Indian Army. However, Ishar asserts that it's the British that raged the war first. Houghton is angry and tells Ishar not to comment about politics. He decides to transfer Ishar to Saragari Fort, a heliographic communication post with fewer troops. Ishar will take charge and carry out the communication job between Galliston and Lockhart Fort. Ishar has no other choice but reluctantly obeys. After getting out of Houghton's office, Ishar is called to talk to Lawrence, who expresses his disdain for him and India in general. Ishar could not do anything but hide his anger and walk away. In a while, Ishar goes back to the nursing room to say goodbye to his subordinate before heading to the Saragari fort. During their conversation, it is revealed that Ishar already got married and his wife is the only reason for him to keep moving forward. On the way, heading to Saragari, he meets the Afghan woman he saved the other day. Despite the language barrier, they both greet each other as she gives him something to eat. Ishar keeps a small handkerchief that his wife gave him and recalls the time with her. Finally, Ishar shows up in Saragari, where the troop is a mess, as there are only 20 of them and they don't have much to work on. What they do every day is enjoy chicken fights. Ishar immediately enforces discipline on the soldiers. He goes outside of the fort to grow a garden as a way to remember his life back home. When he gets inside the fort, the soldier has already cooked the chicken. Ishar gets furious and decides to punish them all to live without food for a week. Ishar's presence at Saragari Fort frustrates the soldiers. On the other side of the border, the leaders of the tribesmen, Khan Masood, Gul Bashal, and Mullah Sadula are mounting an attack towards the British army. They blame the British Indian army for stopping them from punishing a woman who insulted Allah's name. To protect their traditions and faith, they decide to unify and declare a holy war towards the British army. Meanwhile, in the fort, Ishar feels pity for his comrade and decides to lift the punishment. 
Ishar was living without food as well. The soldiers later confront Ishar and pay respect to him. That evening, they have dinner and dance happily together. Back to the Afghan tribes. They plan to attack Saragari Fort in the morning. They will take over Galistan and Lockhart in the afternoon. Without Saragari, the British army will not be able to communicate with each other. In the meantime, Ishar is informed about a Saragari's informant who went missing for three days. Shar comes to the village nearby in search of their informant and learns that he has left the village last night as he is under threat. Here, he also learns that the men in the village have gone out preparing for a war. Only the old people stay to build a mosque for winter to come. Soon after, Ishar goes back to the fort and asks his comrades to help the villagers. The next day, all Sikh soldiers and the Saragari come to the Muslim village to build the mosque. At the end of the day, the villagers express their gratitude to the soldiers for helping them. The next day in Lockhart Fort, as Houghton sees a large group of Afghan tribesmen are marching towards Saragari, he sends a message to Ishar saying he is sending troops for help. Ishar gathers his men to the top of the wall and sees a large group of some 10,000 tribesmen encircling the fort. Mullah, on the other hand, drags the woman that Ishar saved earlier to the front line and kills her. When Ishar receives a message from Hatton, he promptly holds a meeting with his comrades. He informs that both Galistan and Lockhart cannot help them as all the routes are blocked by the tribesmen. They are ordered to abandon the fort and escape. As it is too risky to have his 20 soldiers fight against 10,000 tribesmen, Ishar gives his men the opportunity to think twice. However, the soldiers still commit to fight this war anyway. Knowing that his fellows won't change their decision, Ishar has to lead his men and heads out to fight against the 10,000 tribesmen. In a while, Ishar initiates the war by aiming his gun toward the enemy and shooting one of them dead. Later, he deploys his force in position. Gurmuk Singh, the soldier in charge of the communication, questions why Ishar didn't follow Hatton's order and decides to let them fight. Ishar explains that this war is for their own freedom. The Sikh soldiers will not fight as a white man tells them to do so. Today, the 21 men will fight like free men and die like free men. Ishar also asks Kudadad, the cook, to provide water to the injured soldiers, including the Afghans. He claims that fighting only kills the enemy. Kindness destroys enmity itself. Moments later, the tribesmen charge at Saragari as the 21 brave soldiers aim to shoot. Ishar orders Gurmuk Singh to keep Hatton updated. In the meantime, the Afghans stop attacking and wave white flags. Ishar orders his men to prolong the battle after learning that the British army is sending help and will arrive the next day. Once they keep the battle going, they will prevent the Afghans from advancing to Galistan and Lockhart Fort in the evening. Ishar goes outside of the fort to meet with the leaders of the tribes, including Khan Masood, Gulbad Shah, and Mullah Sadullah. As Ishar orders his cook to let the injured Afghans drink, Mullah immediately stops it and refuses Ishar's kind act. Khan Masood states that they will take over Saragari by noon and will continue to defeat Galistan and Lockhart in the evening. In the meantime, two tribesmen approach the fort and dig a hole to bomb it. Before the tribe leaders return, Ishar sends two Afghans along with them. Without suspicion, the leaders get back to their front line. However, it turns out that the two tribesmen are wrapped with bombs and get killed shortly after released. As the battle continues, the Afghans keep charging at the fort while the Sikh soldiers fight back valiantly. They manage to get to the wooden gate and start to demolish it. A sniper is assigned to hide behind a rock to kill the soldiers defending on top of the fort. Ishar rushes to see his comrade and manages to finish the sniper off. Back at the fort gate, the Afghans shoot at it and kill one of the comrades. The Sikh soldiers open the gate and charge at the Afghans. After a while fighting, most of the Sikhs are wounded and try to get inside the fort. However, they are outnumbered and killed shortly after. 
seven out of 21 soldiers have died in the battle. In the meantime, the troops in Saragari Fort run out of bullets and ask for help from Galistan. However, it is impossible in this situation. Now, the Afghans have reached the wall and made a pile of dead bodies to climb onto the fort. Even though the Sikhs have to use the very last bullets they have, they still fight valiantly. When some of the Afghans climb to the fort, Ishar combats them and manages to fight back. He also looks around and sees most of his men are dead. Later on, the Afghans are trying to blow up a part of the wall in the west side, making it shattered. Till 4 p.m., the wall has fallen, but Ishar and three of his men are yet to surrender. Ishar gives his last order to the remaining comrades. He tells Gurmukh to keep sending messages for Galistan and tells his cook to provide water to the injured soldiers. As the enemy charges into the fort, Ishar takes off his stripes and grabs a red hot sword to combat. Even though he is a skilled fighter, he is defeated as being outnumbered by lots of enemies. While fighting, he is hesitant to kill a young boy among the Afghans. A random tribesman shoots him in the arm right after this. Seeing Ishar is fatally wounded, one of the remaining Sikh soldiers starts to shoot the Afghans from the top, but later also gets killed brutally. Ishar is stabbed by the young soldier that he was hesitant to kill. In the end of the battle, we can see Ishar's comrades are almost defeated. The cook also gets killed while providing water for the wounded Afghans. Seeing that Ishar is on the verge of death, Mula approaches and tries to take off his turban. However, Ishar resists and manages to stab him. Masood approaches and is impressed by Ishar's bravery. He orders his men not to touch any Sikh's turban. Now, as Ishar is dying, he sees the vision of his wife calling for him. Later on, the Afghan's leaders know that their plan went wrong because it is impossible to reach Galistan and Lockhart now. They see Garmuk on the defensive wall and decide to kill him. His scream can be heard painfully. Garmuk writes his name on the wall and rushes to the tower. While he is trying to shoot at the enemy and defend himself, the Afghans corner him and start to set the tower on fire. However, to the Afghans' surprise, instead of hearing a painful scream, they see Gurmukh walking out with his body on fire. When he starts to chant the slogan of the Sikh, Gul Badshah points the gun at him. But little did he know, Gurmukh soon grabs him and triggers the grenade, resulting in a huge explosion. After hearing the chant from Saragari, all the Sikh soldiers in Galistan and Lockhart start to chant the slogan as a way to grieve for their comrade's death. Later on, the surviving Afghans loot the fort and eventually set it on fire. All the 21 soldiers involved in the battle were awarded the Indian Order of Merit, the highest gallantry award an Indian soldier could receive at the time. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.